Good. So, you know, I think, you know, obviously they did an introduction, so we don't have to go deep into it, but, you know, just to give everyone a context around what today's session is going to be about, um, obviously it's all around mindset for excellence. And, you know, I'm sure Tanvi, you know, mindset for you has been a really critical aspect of how you've become very successful as, as a, as a professional player, right? I mean, I don't meet too many professional players, so it's really cool to be able to interact with one, but, um, I know for myself, you know, obviously at a young age, uh, to be able to work with people that are much older than than myself, a lot of it has come down to mindset. And so I definitely resonate with, I think, the topic. And, you know, I think just to first start out, uh, it'd be really interesting to learn a little bit more about how you got into um, the current profession that you're in. Like, how did you become a professional squash player? Like, it'd be awesome to start there. Yeah, for sure. So I've been playing squash since I was about nine years old. and. Um... So my junior career in squash uh, was up till the point that I left, left for college. I went to the States. And um, this is something that, you know, I was so passionate about. Uh, I wasn't the best at it when I started. And there were many ups and downs, you know. And, but there's something within me just made me stick to it. And um, over the years, you know, I've learned so much. And, you know, I'm so fortunate that Squash actually brought me to heartfulness, you know, later on, I'll get to that. But um, yeah, so I basically played and then I got recruited as part of the Columbia squash team. And uh, once I went to college, uh, I, I was kind of confused, you know, because a lot of people once they're there, even despite being recruited and stuff for sports, uh, a lot of people end up, you know, finding a job in the US and just staying there. But I don't know, there was something in me and luckily, like my parents were so supportive that I decided to do this professionally, you know, and I came back about two years back and I've been playing professionally ever since then. So um, a little bit about my past, you know, since this topic is about peak performance. Um, so when I was a kid, you know, I was very emotional. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very sensitive person. And... Um, there was this whole idea of think and play. So when I was a young child and I would play and I would go into a squash match, my coaches, my parents, you know, all the adults around that area would always say, okay, then we go in and think and play, you know. And that whole match, you know, be it a 20-minute match, 30-minute match, I would just end up trying to think, think, think. And uh, coming out of the match, let's say after 20 minutes and after having lost, I would tell myself, oh, Tanvi, today you didn't think enough, you know. Mm. And that mindset kind of never left me, you know, I may have gotten a little mentally tougher and more positive, but this whole concept of thinking and playing, it stuck with me, you know, and uh, about a year back, I was meeting this aunt of mine at a family, some birthday party, and she was talking to me about meditation because uh, she'd been a professional golfer. And uh, at that point, I had really started introspecting a lot. And I had done a few meditations on my own, you know, generally people in my generation, we like to go online and do guided meditations or use an app. And so it was very erratic. It was nothing consistent and it was just five to 10 minutes. I couldn't sit longer than that. So one thing she told me, which really stuck with me was, you know, the same way in which you practice a sport with the same discipline and time and structure you have to do your meditation in a, in a similar format if you want the kind of benefit that I'm sure you want out of it. So uh, I went back and she put me in touch with a heartfulness trainer. Uh, his name is Joshua. And um, at the time I didn't know he was this uh, famous author and I just went to his house for a sitting and um, I did three days in a row. I did the meditations and each sitting was about 40 minutes, you know, and it was just amazing sitting there with, with someone else and experiencing transmission for the first time. You know, it was such a powerful experience because it just went by so fast and those three days left me so decluttered. There was so much baggage that I didn't even know I had in me, you know. And ever since then, there was, I, I just knew that this is something which is so good for me and I have to keep this up not only in terms of sports, but in, in life in general, you know, this just molds everything and shapes everything that I do. So um, I had an interview about on the fourth day uh, after I started Heartfulness. 
and um, I've always been a very shy public speaker. You know, even in college, I would email my professors and say, you know, I can't speak. Uh, I have a fear of speaking, and can you please? Um, I'd send you my thoughts before class. You know, I always found a way out. Yeah. <laughs> so interviews terrified me, and um, it was just surreal because I went for that interview, and I just spoke. You know, it just I just was in such a flow. And I actually didn't want it to end. And I just spoke for 15 minutes. And that was my first experience actually doing something from, you know, your heart versus actually thinking and all, you know, things started to flow from there. And uh, yeah, that's what really kind of, it just like shook me and, it, and I really felt the power of this sort of practice. And yeah, I've been doing it ever since then. And it's going to be a year now. That's awesome. That's really interesting. I'm, I'm curious about one thing that you said around overthinking, right? Because I think many of the people on this, uh, you know, live, right? They've obviously experienced overthinking. I know I've experienced overthinking. It sounds like you have as well. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, where did overthinking start for you when you were on the squash court? And similarly, um, what have been some of the tools or techniques? Of course, heartfulness sounds like one of them. But are there other things that you've done to kind of aid at that overthinking nature that you've had on the squash court as well as I'm sure off the squash court as well? Yeah, so um, you know, I read this really amazing book once. It's called The Untethered Soul. Yeah, and, that's a uh, great book. Yeah, it's an amazing book. Yeah. And so the first chapter, as you know, it kind of talks about the voice inside your head. Yeah. And it, it really explains it really beautifully about how there's this constant chatter in your head and it shows you how there'll be many different voices. So for you to say, for me to say that, oh, okay, this one voice is Tanvi, but this other voice is not Tanvi. That's incorrect because there's so many of them. To identify with one of them to, is, is giving them power over you. And it kind of shows you how to just start observing those thoughts around you and, and kind of just not, not identifying with them, right? So actually even before heartfulness, I'd started introspecting a lot about, you know, different ways of identifying with, you know, limiting beliefs and such and such. Another thing I found was, you know, every time I would play a tournament, just moments prior to like half an hour before my match, there would, even despite being in a really positive frame of mind, there'll always be that one thought creeping in and coming in saying, oh, you're going to fail. And one fun way for me to deal with that was I just gave it a horrible, really funny name. And uh, in Hindi, I just called it Bittu or something. And it would just be like, shut up, Bittu, every time it came. So I didn't give it that, I didn't give it the, that power over me. But uh, upon starting, like, heartfulness, um, I, <clears throat> you know, like, when you're playing a match, and this happens to me a lot, you know, I'm playing a match and I'm playing really well. And I come out and my coaches are like, damn good, you're like, doing a really good job. And then I'll go into the third game and then suddenly like I'll lose like a lot of points in a row. And you know what heartful, heartfulness made me aware of that feeling of tightness that comes in at that moment. And it took me some time, you know, to kind of realize that feeling of, you know, tension and fear. And it's so obvious that when you're feeling those emotions, how can you do anything logically? How can you hit the right shot, you know? And so many people are unaware, like at that moment, they try to enforce reinforce positivity through thoughts and stuff like that but you know actually going within and trying to you know feel what you're feeling and using feelings as a way to kind of maneuver your way that's what i realized yeah no that's a, that's a great point 